Hey train party people, welcome to episode 67 of my South Olympic Branch update series. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if you guys can hear this. I was dragging the train around the layout and it sounded like I had a flat wheel and I thought, this is HO scale. These cars don't have real brakes, at least not yet, anyway. Not sure I'd ever add that if it became a thing. But anyway, it sounded like I was hearing thunk, 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 thunk. And uh, I was listening to it. I finally figured out this car has just a little bit of a kind of a click in this axle right here. And I think I'm going to get my truck tuner out and see if I can figure out if that will fix it. I discovered when I was running a train for the last video that one of the wheel sets on this car had an interesting sound to it. It made it, it sounded like it was, it was clicking when this thing was running down the tracks in such a way that it made it sound like it had a flat wheel, right? So when I listen to this really closely, I found that this axle right here has a little bit of a an unsmooth sound to it. I briefly considered not fixing this because it would create a, a flat wheel sound, but I also found it to be annoying. So um, I decided I'm going to, I decided to take my truck tuner which is this thing I got from Micah Mark right here. But I have not, couldn't find the darn thing at first. And of course, I put it right back where I found it. I had put it exactly where I found it, which was in a little tool drawer or a little uh, accessory drawer over there at the bench, the other bench. So anyway, taking the wheel set out of that, I suppose I could just pop the truck off of this, couldn't I? That would help. And uh, 
you can take the truck tuner, insert it in the where the axle was, and you just turn it. Now it feels doesn't feel very smooth as I'm running it around in here. And maybe that's why that axle doesn't feel so smooth. So that felt like I might have smoothed it out a little bit. <sighs> now let's flip it around and see how it feels on the other side. Okay. Yeah, that's my that's pretty smooth. This side is is smoother. So I'll take that back out of there. Get back in here and let's see if I can find that axle. Put the uh, axle back. And of course, there is a possibility that the axle has something going on with it. Don't see anything on that end of it. Uh, well, it looks okay. All right. Now, yeah, let's see. You know, I think that's going to be better. Take it over to the layout and find out. Okay, so I'm going to put a little pressure in this thing. You hear that? Yeah, I can... I'm putting a lot of weight on the on the car. So it's possible that it won't make that kind of racket when it's actually in the tram. I thought that this thing was level. I leveled this, I'll tell you. Of course, it didn't roll very far, so. Anyway, buildings do shift. So, we'll see. I'll have to put it back in the train and run it around. See where that piece of blue tape is? And that's where the reversing zone ends. And uh, I've been trying some different things. I've had a, a PSX auto reverser attached to the zone and it really, there was stalling right there. It would keep on going after it stalled, the trains would, but it was really annoying the crap out of me. So, I tried some different wiring configurations. See all that mess right there? And I wasn't getting anywhere with that. I tried connecting a, a uh, new PM74 from Digitrax. That's that right there. That wasn't, that wasn't working. But I also found out that, or I heard a rumor, maybe you could say on the Digitrax.io group, that it would be a really good idea if I uh, actually uh, and see that locomotive just shut off and turned on again, so that's not really supposed to happen. Um, if I firmware updated all my my uh, equipment, at least the uh, the DCS two forty. So I don't have any. Windows laptops. My wife had an old one that she let me use. And um, I went through and I we got the, the installer downloaded and did the firmware updates. Um, once I started doing firmware updates, I went ahead and updated the, uh, the PM74 well, the PM74 doesn't have any updates yet, so that's that's not true. Um, the DCS240, the DB220 booster, um, my other my other booster, a DB210, and uh, the um, LNWIs, uh, and the UR93. Uh, I'm told this might actually resolve uh, an issue with uh, UR92 compatible compatibility with the UR93 in a mixed use environment. So I'm gonna try that too. I haven't got around to that yet. Um, but as you can see, this whole testing thing has made my wiring a just a complete mess. And um, like I said, I'm still not sure that I've got the issue resolved. <laughs> 
but uh, I've got to send an email off to the DCC specialties guys and see if they have any thoughts on what'll help. I might have made some progress on this auto reversing issue. And if there's one sure way to tell, it's to one have some company, but nobody nobody's coming over tonight. Uh, so the other way to tell is to take a video. And uh, rule of thumb is, you know, if your uh, if your train makes it through the video without stalling, then uh, then you probably have got it fixed, right? And that's that's the way I always understood it. Hmm. Maybe. So I got to go to a train show in Elmo today. It's organized by a gentleman named Tim Dauber. And uh, got to hang out with some friends, Mike, Terrell, Bill, you know, um, saw this guy I know named Raymond, and uh, Jim uh, Yonkins, who has the Mud Bay in Southern, which is a really cool and skill layout down in Olympia. Anyway, um, also picked up couple of boxes of these uh, consolidated freightways uh, vans um, which I believe is a pretty good fit for my my era it might be a little modern but anyway got two of those um, not bad not bad price 20 bucks a uh, piece for those or the box I should say um, and then some monogram uh, cars there's a uh, t-bird a Corvette and a uh, uh, Grand Prix, Pontiac Grand Prix in here. So, can't really see that very well. Not enough light. There we go. And uh, not a bad deal for three cars. Um, it's too bad the Corvette isn't brown uh, because there was a guy in my hometown whose name was Jim. And uh, Jim Hill. And uh, Jim Hill was a customer of my mom's. He was a, my mom cut hair. And I uh, was a beautician. And uh, Jim would, uh, when he was in town, he worked construction oftentimes in Alaska. But when he was in town, he would come and get his hair cut by my mom. So it would be better if that was brown. But uh, I suppose I could paint it. But that's not, not on the agenda yet. Uh, and then um, I also picked up, I'd never heard of Magnuson models. But uh, this other guy named Mike... Um, had these. It was five dollars for two of them. Um, I don't know uh, what I'll end up doing with them, but uh, it'd be nice if they were, you know, a little bit better detailed. Uh, actually, a lot better detailed. They look like a almost like a 3D print, but I guess it's a resin cast. Anyway, um, they would make a pretty good. Uh, 77 Nova hatchback. So, anyway, it's also, it's been a, a strong week for purchasing on the railroad, what can I say? Because uh, I got some eBay stuff to come in. We'll talk about that in a second. So, if you ever go to the eBay or Evil Bay, as some people call it, and you're looking for one thing, and then other things pop up, I happen to see, I was looking for well, a different color of one of these uh, Burkina station wagons. Now, it tends to resemble the uh, the truckster from the movie uh, Vacation, National Lampoon's Vacation. So some people have said maybe I should put a little croc clock Clark Griswold in there. If I could talk, it would help, right? Um, but actually, it's a I gotta get this up here where you guys can see this. There actually is a pretty, it's actually pretty well detailed. I'm I'm pretty impressed. This is a Brakina car that uh, that I got off of eBay. It's the first Brakina scale model car I've ever had. Um, I also got this uh, this uh, 
Mark 7, I think is what they would call this car, or Mark 4, whatever, uh, Lincoln. And uh, not too many of those in Elma, but, uh, you know, a nice little Continental for the, for the layout. I already had a Rapido uh, Caprice uh, sedan, but uh, I figured it wouldn't hurt to have another one. Uh, this is a decent deal. And uh, same seller, actually. So, um, at least I think it was the same seller. So they actually had like, was saving a little bit on shipping. You know, that's, that's what you tell yourself, right? Uh, and um, another uh, mini metals uh, Chevy truck. So the old standard cab Chevy trucks and Ford trucks back in the day were pretty common around there. Uh, while I was looking around, another pack of 80s Mustangs popped up uh, for an, you know, a decent deal. It's about, uh, well, it's about 40 bucks with shipping and tax, but, but some of the cars nowadays, I mean, shoot, this Burkina one, I think these things cost me almost, almost $30 for just one of those. Although this is a more nicely detailed model than the Mustangs, but that old Concor, these old Concor models were, you know, those things were probably made in 2000. Anyway, uh, Burkina also makes some trucks. Now, I've been looking for some uh, 70s and 80s day cab semis, you know, uh, but can't not seeing much in that regard. Uh, but this one, a little snub nose here, I think it looks like a pretty neat semi. It's not, you know, all that. Um, here, let's lift it up. Uh, you know, you didn't see these everywhere, at least not with this, uh, spiffy of a paint job and all that, but, um, it'll be nice to have a, have a rig on the layout that, that looks more the part of a, of a, a semi you'd see in the eighties. And then, um, and yeah, so that's, that's all the autos that got that are getting added to the layout this week now do i have parking for all of these yet no but um it's nice to uh, have some more vehicles that i can use when i get things uh, set up for those scenes another auto reversing test here so we're outside this zone now and I'm just going to stop it and uh, reverse and try going back. That blue piece of tape right there signifies the, uh, the other end of this auto reversing zone. So it's interesting, you know, most of the instructions out there for auto reversing indicates that you're, um, you're going around in a loop and you're coming out to the same track, but that's not the configuration that I have here. So it takes a little bit of a different tactic. And, you know, that looks good. Let's flip it back around again and we'll go the other direction. I usually like to bring my trains to a slower stop and then go back and forth, but you know. Anyway. And you know guys and gals, if there's any gals watching, um, I could probably go on for quite some time about all the crazy things I've tried to get this to work smoothly. And all I can say is that your eyes would probably roll back in your heads. Now at the moment, this seems like a little bit of an improvement because when I would go back, backing into the yard or rolling into the yard, it would stall. But, you know, 
there's always another train to test with. Okay, next trial train is going to be a tsunami equipped Atherin Genesis with a lighted caboose on the end. So far we've done a passenger train test and uh, a test with a Walther's uh, tsunami equipped and a Bowser QSI equipped. Okay, we're getting close to getting this out the other side of the reversing section. And we've just cleared that. So let's slow this baby down. And let's go the other direction and see what we get. Okay. First junction looks good. I'm gonna bring up the sound. I really need to turn the volume down on 1741 here. So I apologize to those of you who might think it's a little loud. But I want to have it on when I cross the joint. See, that's what we're talking about. That's the thing that's going to happen. Oh, I'm going to mute it as I bring it into the yard. <clears throat> okay, so we've still got that slight pause. And I'm still looking for a solution for that. But I think that part of this one could be that I have that track gapped for uh, the way that the, uh, the DCC Specialties PSX wants it. But I'm not gonna change that around until I actually get some information from them. So if you look closely at this, you'll see there's a, this, this gap right here, and then this gap right here. Digitrack seems to want the gap straight across, and the DCC Specialties equipment seems to want it um, offset by about three quarters of an inch. The interesting part of all this nonsense is that this track next to it is what I call my inner track. And it's got a DCC Specialties reverser on it. Um, there's the gap right there for that one at this side. And then there's the gap on the other end. And this one works flawlessly. That does not. That's the one that I'm having the same issue whether I use the the Digitrax equipment or the uh, DCC Specialties equipment. And the other funny thing about this is, is that I have reversing on the lower level and with my Digitrax stuff, I've gotten that to work flawlessly. So in other sections, I've gotten this stuff to work flawlessly, but not right here. So um, I'm kind of thinking maybe I've got it too close to the yard. But I tried changing the, some things with that, and that didn't, um, that didn't help. And I don't think it's because it's on a curve, because I have some of the other gaps on a curve, and it doesn't seem to care about that. So, I don't know. Anyway. Well, I've done what I can so, think of so far to try to resolve this uh, auto-reversing issue. And like I said, it happens seems to happen with some locomotives but otherwise those locomotives seem to work fine so it's an odd odd thing anyway enough about that i'm not getting anywhere with that i got some emails to write on that so i think i'm going to call that it for episode number 67 and um you guys hang in there and have fun with your trains and uh, if you're going to be in monroe this weekend i'll see you there have a good one